Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Allen, author of the book Receptor-Based Solutions, Functional Neurology Every Doctor Should Know. Continuing with that same idea with the gallant reflex, checking the hamstrings for a functional facilitation and tapping the dorsal spine on the same side, hold strong, I found caused a functional inhibition of the hamstring on the same side. Tapping on the right, hold strong, would cause a functional inhibition of the hamstrings on the right. We're dealing with above T6 now. If I stroke the dorsal spine above T6 and check the ipsilateral hamstring, a normal response is for that hamstring to be functionally facilitated. Stroking the left side should cause functional facilitation of the hamstring ipsilaterally. If I stroke the dorsal spine contralaterally, the normal response is functional inhibition. If I stroke the left dorsal spine I should get functional inhibition of the hamstrings contralaterally. If I tap the dorsal spine on the left, I should get functional facilitation of the hamstring contralaterally. These are all normal responses. It's not unusual to see a tapping on the right side, dorsal spine for example, and a functional inhibition of the hamstrings contralaterally or stroking of the dorsal spine on the right side, for example, and a functional inhibition of the hamstrings ipsilaterally, both of those would be considered abnormal. When you find these abnormalities, always think the highest representation. In this case, because we're dealing with above T6, I would be considering the patient's cervical spine and a potential imbalance or dysfunction at that point registering throughout the whole dorsal spine and lumbar spine, actually the muscles of upright posture, and that dysfunction would relate to the cerebellum.